Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behaviour, the Earth's mightiest video podcast. Oh my goodness, it's been just, what, a week since the last episode of Good News, and just the news keeps on coming, and I can barely keep up with it. First of all, let's start with the newest thing, and then go back. AXY Toys, who made the incredible dinosaur barbarian creatures, yeah, they're doing not the pit. That's literally what this is listed as. Not the pit. Gotta love them for being direct in what they're doing. So this guy's gonna be up for pre-order in about one to two weeks on 5K Toys. And just look at the size of this. Look at the chonk. Brothers and sisters. So you got a red version, you got a gray version, and apparently they're doing blank bodies as well. This could be a gray Hulk. I wonder what Marvel Legends head swaps would look like. They'd probably look too small on it, to be honest, because this thing is going to be like Monster Hide levels of size and chonk. At least. It looks gigantic and you've got cloth goods on there as well. You can see cloth trousers and a waistcoat with the chains as well. And just the mean, gnarly face. This looks so badass. Interesting little point for people who are kind of not that familiar with Marvel Legends history. There was a pit Build a figure. Help me out, historians. But I think when Toybiz stopped doing Marvel characters, they did a line of independent comic book characters. And we had all sorts of different ones, like Savage Dragon. And there was a pit build a figure that looked kind of like this, but probably not as big and heavy and chunky as Chonky. This thing looks really cool. No price yet. I'm guessing, I don't know, maybe 70 bucks? Give or take, maybe more. It's got cloth goods after all, it's hard to say. But Lord knows, I'm going to be watching this one closely. Gang, thank you so much for watching the show. And if you do enjoy the show and you want to help me out a little bit, well, you can do. Mainly by going over, going over to the channel sponsor, Into the AM. These are the folks who made this beautiful graphic design t-shirt, along with a whole bunch of other ones as well. If you click the link in the description below, then you're going to get 10% off your order because you're one of the model behavior best friends. Not only that, but they're doing all sorts of different bundles and deals right now. You can get three shirts for about 60 bucks minus the 10% you're getting as well because you're going through my link. Oh my goodness, they're practically giving them away. And they shouldn't do because these things... These are worth the money you're going to spend on them, especially for me. I got ones that are specifically 100% cotton, because little fact about Dave, I got very sensitive skin, and I break out in a bit of a rash, and I feel all itchy if it's got synthetic fibers. Yeah, I know, I should just be allowed to walk around naked. I'd be fine with that, but society insists that I wear clothes, so I might as well wear 100% cotton t-shirts with badass graphic designs on the front. And you can too, by clicking the link in the description below. All right, gang, thank you for accepting <laughs> this, this advertisement offer. On with the news. Mezco have shown full reveal images of their five points of articulation Goonies set. I know a couple of folks who are big, big Goonies fans. So for the completionist, this one's got to be a no-brainer, especially because you get all the characters for a hundred bucks. Of course, this is just the five points of articulation set. So these aren't like the sh super zhuzhed up Mezco figures. And speaking of Mezco figures, oof. Man, I'm feeling the FOMO right now with everyone posting pictures of their Ninja Turtles set. But hey, you, you can't buy everything. Nonetheless, though, if you want to buy this, it's going to be available. Well, it's going to be released, hopefully, around about the fourth quarter of this year. So get your pre-orders in now. McFarlane Toys have given a first look preview of their Zoobster. I'm not going to redo that. Of their Doomsday mega figure. I was about to say an S. Where was that S? Doomsday. I don't know where that was going to come from. Yes, a Doomsday mega figure. Looks like he's got some glow in the dark features as well. I think that this design, like, it looks mean. I don't like the colors, but it's also very hard to tell. This is only a preview image. But the last Doomsday was in a Superman 2 pack. I thought he looked decent, but I would have wanted a, a bigger, more giant Doomsday. And this is what this is but 
If you don't want the neon green glow-in-the-dark looking gimmick, then that's going to be a detraction. Either way, I'm very intrigued to see how this actually looks when they reveal the proper pictures. See how he stacks up to the rest of the DC regular figures. Do you want to feel old? Street Sharks are about to celebrate their 30th anniversary, and Mattel are going to make sure they do it in style by re -re not re-releasing. I, I don't know. Are they, are they the original ones that they're just re-releasing, or are they new versions? I don't know. They're Street Sharks. You can go buy them if you want. They're going to be released around about June, and they're available for pre-order now on all the usual places. 25 bucks a piece. A little bit of... 90s nostalgia? Jeez, yeah, that was 30 years ago. I still feel like 90s was just the last decade. It wasn't. Or also, if you want something that's more like a zhuzhed up modern version of Street Sharks, I'm really looking forward to the Fure Toys shark mobster guys who should be dropping any day now. So for your anthropomorphic shark lovers, there's a lot to love. Speaking of a lot to love, <laughs> Sideshow Collectibles, in association with Hondo Toys, are making, and well, they've made it. It's a one-sixth scale Magneto. There he is. We're showing pictures of it. What they're making right now is waves in the toy community because everyone's looking at this and going, oh my goodness, I need this on my shelf. So at least that's what I'm imagining people are saying. People with any taste ought to be saying it, because this thing looks so awesome. Especially coupled with the fact that they've just done Wolverine as well, and now they're, they're just feeding into that 90s nostalgia. And believe you me, the lights are on and burning brightly for the masses when it comes to 90s X-Men nostalgia. Magneto looks wicked. He's got a magnetism gimmick with his hand there. He's got power effects. I love the little backdrop with the comic book as well. I'm not going to get him for the same reason that I didn't get Wolverine. Why? Because I, you, you can't just get one. You know that if you get one, you're going to get everything. It's going to become a whole thing. I can't afford any more whole things to get into. So instead, I'm going to admire this from afar. And oh my goodness, there's a lot to admire. No release date or price yet. But in the meantime, we've got a whole bunch of pretty pictures. And golly, they do look pretty. Hired Toys have shown a little preview image of their Contra Operation Galuga 1 12th scale figures. So you've got the two main protagonists, and that's all I can tell you right now. I've only got a couple of pictures. I don't really need to vamp very much. That's, that's all we got. Hopefully we'll get some more images soon. In the meantime, though, go about your business. Nendroid are making a little Jaws figure, and Nendroid, they specialize in super cute, chibi little figures. So this is totally their wheelhouse. Going to be about 35 bucks and released about this time next year, so you can have a bit of a wait for him. But even though this isn't the kind of thing I normally really focus on much, I just wanted to point it out, because Jaws is genuinely one of my all-time favorite movies. The top three normally circulate between Jaws, Django, and Robocop, with Terminator 2 oh, always jockeying for position. So I do kind of dig this. It's pretty sweet. SH Figure Arts have shown off their Dragon Ball Z Trunks figure. No release date yet or a price, just a whole bunch of pictures. So you know me, I'm not going to waste your time. I think I've shown enough of them now. Let's move on to the next bit of news. This train has got to keep on rolling, baby. We got a lot to cover. Icon Heroes are doing a Kickstarter for this line called Zujitsu, which celebrates Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with a little animal kind of theme. So it's a set of four characters that very much have King from Tekken vibes going on here. You can get a set of four for 100 bucks or individually for 30 bucks. So this is just in the works at the moment as a Kickstarter. Then again, the way that the news cycle works, they'll probably be fully funded and out the door by the time this episode goes up. Nonetheless, though, you can go check out the Kickstarter and see what the details are. But hey, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, cat fighting, animal people, yeah, that, that sounds like a fun combination. You want to know how long it's been since the last episode of Good News? I haven't even fully commented on all the McFarlane 90s JLA reveals that we've had. I covered maybe one of the preview images. We got the whole batch now with a Plastic Man builder figure. So there's Electro Superman, there's black costume Tim Burton looking Batman, there's Green Lantern, is it Jon Stewart? I think. And then there's Aquaman as well, 90s Aquaman with, with the, the hook hand or the, the harpoon hand, if you will. This, you know me, if you watch model behavior, and God bless you if you do, because I can ramble a bit sometimes, you 
You know I rag on McFarlane. Don't like the style. But this, I gotta say, each and every one of these figures, I highly approve of. I actually think, you know what, they just work. Especially Electro Superman, who I can only imagine is gonna get the red repaint version at some point too. And that's like a given. That wouldn't be a cheap way of expending the mold or expanding the use of the mold. Like, you need red soups. That was the whole arc there where he splits into two. But getting this, it just, oh, it conjures up. All the, all the 90s giddy nostalgia. I'd love to see, what's his, is it Prometheus? Prometheus was a big bad in, I think, the Tower of Babel storyline. Takes out the entire JLA until Catwoman kicks him in the nuts. I genuinely think that was the story. I, I don't remember very well, but help me if I'm, if I'm wrong. But these figures, yeah, they honestly look like a, a, a genuine win from McFarlane. Nice work, Todd. 3-0 are doing a T-51 Nuka-Cola Power Armor figure. This actually looks the bomb. I, I love mech suits, armor, robot looking characters. And 3-0, that is their wheelhouse. That is their speciality, is this kind of, of mechanical sort of look. They just do it so well. And all the different pieces of armor that you can strip off of this down to like the bare base of the character and then put it all back together, I just love the intricate detail, man. I'm a sucker for detail, except for like anything else in the rest of my life where I fly by the seat of my pants. When it comes to action figures, I do sweat the small stuff. And the amount of detail in this, ah, oh, looks absolutely gorgeous, man. It's a good time to be a Fallout fan. Hopefully the show lives up to expectations as well. Honestly, I, I think it will. Higher Toys are doing a King Ghidorah. $110 gonna be released apparently in the second quarter of this year, which is like, we're coming up now, but they still got about three months of wiggle room. And it looks pretty spectacular. Bright gold, fiery flaming. This is the legendary pictures looking King Ghidorah. And yeah, they've got a whole line of these legendary monsters and they all look very impressive. This one looks no different. I mean, when you're making a giant three-headed monster dragon, Honestly, you really can't go too far wrong. Marvel Legends have shown full reveal images of their Baron Zemo and Arnim Zola 2-pack. Gonna be 50 bucks and releasing around about June this year. This is kind of old news because, I mean, obviously we got the reveal in the Hasbro Pulse stream a few weeks ago. But now you've got all the lovely high-res, zhuzhed up pictures. And the Zemo, he looks kind of cool. It's a basic figure, but the gnarly unmasked face, proper like Jason Voorhees sort of style. They, they, they've got a little bit visceral with that, and I really dig it. The Arnim Zola, this is the third time, I think, that we've had this figure, once as a deluxe, once as a two-pack, and now we've got it again. So Hasbro are not just double dipping, they're treble dipping on this one, but it's these kinds of like ugh, slightly irksome marketing tactics that mean we get characters like Heinrich Zemo. Is it Heinrich? I, you know, I'm not an expert on the Zemo family tree. What I can tell you though, is that I appreciate the fact we get such obscure characters, even if occasionally you, know, you kind of got to play the game to get them. Some rumors coming out of Lego, and okay, this is just rumor mill. All right, first of all, they're gonna be doing some more Transformers figures. We're gonna be getting a Lego Bumblebee, apparently gonna be dropping this summer. And also, Scuttlebutt only, cause I don't know if this is real, but there's a Dungeons and Dragons set that's doing the rounds, like a 50th anniversary thing. And this is just a picture that's been popping up all over the place. It, it might not be legit though. So I wanted to comment on it because it's always fun to speculate and consider these things, but I'm not coming on here saying, yo guys, D&D Lego, it's a happening. I don't know about that, but I thought it was a pretty picture nonetheless. And sometimes it's just quite nice to look at pretty things, especially when you got this old mug on the screen. At least you can avert your eyes over to the other side. TB League have shown off their Spartan army commanders, gold and silver, and both of these, they look kind of pretty, but also it's that slightly Uncanny Valley doll sort of look. These are both going to be 68 bucks available on 5K Toys. I believe it's 5K Toys where you can get them. But I, I love all the detail going on here. And I think there, there are those silicon bodies as well. So you got you know, the, the squidgy bits are squidgy and there's no seams or, you know, points of articulation that you can see. It just looks like a, uh, yeah, just like a, a squidgy doll. 
I guess. I'm not selling this, am I? <laughs> they're, they're one twelfth scale, so they could fit in with your mythic legions and your combatants fight for glory type figures. But again, with, with the, the real soft hair and the facial features, I, I don't know. I actually, I kind of like my action figures to look a bit more like action figures. You know, when they're trying a bit too much to look like a, a real doll, then I, I'm like, mm, it, it feels a bit icky. But there's also so much stuff here that I really like with the details and the clasps and the equipment and everything on there. It's a real mixed bag for me. Ultimately, I don't think I'd want them on my shelf, but they're fun to talk about. Beast Kingdom have shown off images of their upcoming Black Knight Venom. This is a real interesting subline that Beast Kingdom are doing. They're about one eighth scale or one ninth scale I think so bigger than Marvel Legends smaller than Hot Toys kind of their own little thing and they're all these medieval versions of Marvel characters so I know that they've done a medieval Iron Man and a medieval Iron Spider and now we got Venom as well there might be some other ones honestly the, the old grain mare she ain't what she used to be I can't always recall these things off the top of my noggin however this is a fun looking weird medieval Black Knight Venom I don't I don't need him I don't necessarily even want him. I like talking about him because I just like the weirdness of it. Goes to show there's something out there for everyone and for every crazy bespoke idea, there's a company that's probably gonna put it into action. Following the initial reveal, we've got full images of Shockwave and Night Pursuit from the G.I. Joe Classifieds line. I, I love the vehicles, man. I, I think once kind of the floodgates opened, for 112th scale vehicles, now we're just getting so many. Uh, but originally, it's like, oh, this is a bit of a, a bit of a rarity, a bit of an unusual thing. And now, GI Joe, they're they're pumping out the the jeeps, the bikes. We got we got the ramen racer. We got Valiverse doing trucks and all kinds of things. There's just a whole bunch of cool stuff out there for your real world army building type people. This looks like another win from G.I. Joe. Even though I don't collect them, I I, I love what they do. And this one, yeah, it it, it seems super cool. Mafex are going back to the boys line with a tease for the deep and soldier boy. So we've already got a few the boys figures from Mafex. I know we've definitely got Butcher and Homelander and I think Starlight. Pretty sure we got a Starlight too. So now they're going to build out the rest of the teams here. And I think Soldier Boy has a particularly interesting, cool kind of costume. A lot of details going on there. And the Deep is super fun as well. I'm, I'm really looking forward to season four. So yeah, what better way to celebrate than dropping some new action figures? Boss Fight Studios, as part of their hacks kind of line in a corda in a coordination, a coordination association. <laughs> Words are hard. They're doing Tarzan and Jane. Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan and Jane. Long since out of copyright, so anyone can do whatever they want with them. And Boss Fight Studios are making some fun-looking action figures. These guys are going to be about twenty-five bucks each. And yeah, I don't have a release date yet. Or if there is one out there, it hasn't been brought my way yet. I know. They don't contact me personally, how rude. Nonetheless though, we're getting a Kazar and a Zebu from Marvel Legends, now we're getting Tarzan and Jane. It's a good time to be a jungle man, folks. Tibetan Play Court. Ever heard of them? No, me either. This is a translation of a translation, I think, so I really can't tell you very much. I just wanted to show you some pretty pictures of a prototype, not Dinobot. Yeah, which one is it? Slag, Snarl, Sludge? I know it's not Swoop, and Grimlock is obvious. The other ones I get confused by, but the Triceratops looks super fun. In some of the designs, a little bit too busy. For my liking. I, li I like to be able to recognize exactly what I'm looking at. I find that with a lot of Japanese anime style mechs. You, you keep adding detail and it looks better and better and better until it gets too much and then you're like, whoa, no, 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 take things off, take things off. We need to make it a bit more sleek so I can recognize what it actually is I'm looking at, not just a pin cushion. So I'm hopefully going to see some more images and get some more information about this and maybe I might even find it on my travels, I don't know, because giant robot dinosaurs, yeah, that's always going to get a little bit of my interest. Hasbro are doing a Target exclusive Optimus Prime and what different version would be best for a Target exclusive than a Target Master? And it's a Target Master, Target Optimus Prime. These just talk about corporate synergy, baby. It, it looks fine. It's, a, it, it, it's definitely one for you completionists out there. I mean, let's face it, Optimus Prime is probably one of the most made characters of any brand, of any action figure. I mean, yeah, granted, of course, you got your Batmans and your Iron Mans and your Wolverines and your Spider-Mans, but 
Optimus Prime has got to be right up there. You don't ever want to be an Optimus Prime completionist. You're going you're gonna to be struggling. So this is another Prime, but in target colors with quite a cute little sound wave style cassette looking doggy. Is, is that Target's mascot? A dog? I, I don't know. We don't have Target in the UK. But yeah, this is more of an oddity for you Transformers super fans. My muscles are the strongest. That's my Zangief right there. And if you don't want this Zangief, then you can get the PCS Statues Zangief, who comes along with Jen as well. Or is it Gen? It's a gif gif thing. I'm sure they say his name in the game, so Street Fighter fans would know. I love these statues. They always come in pairs. The pairs don't really have any relation to each other. Gen and Zangief. Why the heck not? But they're all done in the Udon art style, which I just love. That's the quintessential Street Fighter style for me. So yeah, you know I don't often cover statues, but I love Street Fighter and I love pretty things. And these two, these two together, they qualify as that. Bandai are doing an Ultraman Jacked figure, which is literally the name, I think. Ultraman Jack. And it just looks like Hulkbuster Ultraman, which honestly looks amazing because I don't care for Ultraman. I've never seen anything Ultraman related. I'm, I'm not a Japanese child, but he's got a huge following. But let's face it, most of the Ultraman characters just look like a dude in a morph suit. Whereas this actually looks like a big, mean mech robot. This looks wicked. So yeah, there are some pictures of it. Don't have any more information, but sometimes you just gotta look at a big picture of a mean looking robot and think, dang, <laughs> wouldn't wanna tangle with that guy. Iron Romance Workshop, gotta love that name, showing off their Azura Beast Wars Rampage figure. Whew, that's kind of a word salad there. But it's a super Japanese-ified, mangarized, anime-looking rampage from Beast Wars. Kind of dig that. You know me, I don't normally like my Transformers that transform because then the robot modes don't always look that good. But this, <laughs> they seem to have got the worth of both worlds because either one of these versions looks awesome. I'm not sure where you're going to be able to pre-order it from because obviously this is something that's, that's made over in China. So we've got to try and get it in from there with the imports and whatnot. But for you big time Transformers fans, this is, this is a sexy looking Transformer right here. Boss Fight Studios have also shown off two of their Court of the Dead figures, and these, now, these look pretty wicked. I'm loving this kind of, I don't know, uh, Halloween, not really Halloween-y, but ghostly, ghouly, spiritually, spectery, I don't know what kind of genre to call these, but, I mean, call them wicked looking. There's uh, Gethsemane which is the only reason I remember that name is because it's from the Bible, and another one whose name I forget. But you're looking at pictures now, so you don't need me to fill in the blanks. But yeah, Boss Fight Studios, they're, they're quietly, they're quietly creating a pretty damn impressive back catalogue of 1 12th scale figures. I think this company is just going to keep going from strength to strength. Super 7 is showing off their Android Krang. Gonna be $85 up for pre-order right now and just looks like so much fun. Totally stupid, like ridiculous bonkers. That's one thing I love about Ninja Turtles. There's so many different ways of telling these stories and showing these characters. You have super gritty and like real world dark and then complete tomfoolery nonsense idiocy. This is what the this category fits into here. It's the latter, but in the most fun way. He's got a little hamster on a wheel powering him. He's just so nuts. I kind of like it. <laughs> I don't want it, but I kind of like it for what it is. I like living in a world where we have something as dumb as this. It's good fun. Lego are teasing a new line of Mario Kart Lego. This has me kind of excited because I do like what they do with the Nintendo franchises they have. It looks from the preview that it's going to be a Mario Kart that you build out of Lego, which honestly I don't think is as much fun in my mind as if you could actually build the tracks out of Lego, just like you can build the Mario worlds. I think that's super fun. If you could build the tracks, that would be wicked, and that might be something they're doing. So I'm going to keep an eye on this, because for a casual LEGO fan and a big Mario Kart fan, this is, this is a meeting of two worlds I can get behind. Super cool and kind of a shame <laughs> is what I would say about Insomniac's Spider-Man trailer leak for a game that's not going to happen. There were all these rumors and rumblings that there was going to be a game called, was it The Great Web? 
some, some web-related game. It's going to be a massively multiplayer online game where you become a spider person and you go around with a team of spider people, getting into adventures, fighting the Sinister Six. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, unfortunately, I guess Insomniac decided that the game was not worth the resources that was being pumped into it. Which, yeah, it's, it's a shame. We've got this trailer here, which you can see is very early build. It literally just looks like the Insomniac Spider-Man game just with some extra characters on the screen. You, you see they've got a lot of just still 2D images to take the place of various characters and stuff. So you can see they probably weren't too far along, but oh, it's still a bit of a tease because if there was anything that was going to get me playing online games, it would have been an online multiplayer Spider-Man game. But hey, that's not happening in this timeline, but I bet it is happening in another one. I bet they're having a blast with it. A trailer is out in video game news now. By the way, we're talking about video games. There's a trailer out for Jay and Silent Bob Chronic Blunt Punch. This is just the most millennial kids type thing. Uh, you know, I grew up in the 90s and well, I guess that makes me Gen X, actually. This is the most Gen X thing that I could ever look for. A 2D side-scrolling fighter with Jay and Silent Bob. So I love my Streets of Rage, I love my Golden Axe, all, all those types of games. So you give me a 2D side-scroller like this, I'm gonna be interested. The last one that came out of this sort of ilk was Ninja Turtles, which was really, really good. So if this is another great addition to this 2D side-scrolling beat-em-ups, but with a Jay and Silent Bob, Snoochie Boochies kind of uh, angle to it, I'm down for that. The art style, I thought when I saw an advertisement, it was going to be super pixely, but they're actually going for a very pretty, slick looking animation style. So with that in mind, this, this game could be a winner. This goes to show how old this news program is. Godzilla won Best Special Effects at the Oscars. That's just awesome, man. So, so great. How old is Godzilla now? 70 years old? Goes to show, guys, don't give up on your dreams, all right? 70 plus years old, 30-odd uh, films behind him, finally gets his due. <laughs> that's, that's why model behavior ain't slowing down anytime soon. Over in Creator Corner, huge shout out to Mike Custom. This is a dude who I've been following for a long, long time, and I've been meaning to talk about his work on the channel, but you know me, I get sidetracked and I get distracted. But look at what he does, man. Amazing. Given the world the action figures that other companies refuse to. So what was it, Dave, that finally tipped you over the edge and reminded you to feature him? Was it, was it, was it? Naked She-Hulk? Yeah, yeah, it was it was Naked She-Hulk. <laughs> when, when that when that popped up on my Instagram feed, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I gotta talk about this. And a whole bunch of other ones as well. So just huge big kudos and can of coke to you, man. Amazing work. The the sculpting, the paint, all that jazz. Killing the game, guys. Go give him a follow on Instagram. He's doing it fantastic work. It's not just Naked She-Hulk. <laughs> This summer sees the relaunch of Marvel's X-Men with three ongoing titles, X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, and Exceptional X-Men. And I am so ready for this. My body is ready. And Marvel want to make sure you're ready because they've released a very cool looking trailer to go along with this. And it just feels like we're getting back to the, the good old times, the good old X-Men goodness. Plus Ryan Stegman's doing some of the artwork and I just, freaking love Ryan Stegman's work. He won me over big time with his Spider-Man and Venom stuff. So him doing an X-Men book, yeah, I'm gonna be on board with that. So we, we, we finally left Krakoa. And I know even though I dump on Krakoa all the time, it was a sales success. Like it actually, it, 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 people enjoyed it. So I'm not gonna come out here and say like, oh, Krakoa was rubbish. No, I just didn't enjoy it. So if we're going to get back to more kind of classic traditional X-Men type stories where the X-Men are a bit more likable, a bit more relatable, just putting the hero back in superheroes, yeah, yeah, I'm here for that. Bring on the summer. Bring on the summer of X. I'm going to be front row and center with my popcorn. Reading comics. Over in Collector Corner, oh my goodness, shout out to friend of the show, Chase, who posted on the Model Behavior Facebook page a picture of his X-Men collection. And I messaged him instantly and I was like, dude, 
can you send me some more stuff? Because this is so cool. I'm gonna make a whole new feature on Good News called Collector Corner so that I can show this off because the dude is doing what I love to do, which is taking all different lines of figures and smooshing them together into the ultimate display. We got legends, we got, uh, <laughs> What else? I don't know, my brain just drew a blank. But the thing is, we got statues as well. That's super cool. At first I was like, is that the select juggernaut? And I was like, oh no, that, that's a statue of Ju I'm I'm digging this, man. And then with the huge big sentinel statue that everything is based around, Oh, it's so pretty. I got the idea of like, oh, well, maybe, maybe I could do that too. And then I looked on eBay to see like, well, how much is it to buy that statue secondhand now? Oh, oh, pass. I hope you bought that when it first came out because <laughs> it's expensive. But dude, this display, and thank you so much for sending me not just extra pictures, but the video as well. I love showing this stuff off and it, it, it inspires me, man. It inspires me to make cooler displays. So guys, let me know in the comments, is this how you like to display your figures, different lines? Because with me, I schmoosh, Legends, Mafex, Mezco, uh, figure arts, select, you name it, Revoltech. If it's the best, most badass looking version of the character, that's the one I have. And this, this looks so cool. Chase, thank you so much for helping out the show and thanks for showing off your display. This is, this is awesome. Over in Cosplay Corner, Lada Lumos is just strutting her stuff and being kind of eye-popping while she's doing it. Absolutely stunning cosplays and really great photography and After Effects as well. Not cheating After Effects, just enough After Effects to make the pictures look a little bit more zhuzh. I got so much time for that. In fact, I got about one minute of time. You know what I'm going to use that minute for? You look at the pictures and I'm going to tell you about our channel sponsor, into the AM. If you want to get a badass graphic design t-shirt just like this, you can do by clicking the link in the description below. I wonder if this information just falls on completely deaf ears because you're just looking at the pretty cosplay. I know I would be. I could be saying anything right now. <laughs> but if any of it's getting through, maybe subliminally, go check out the link in the description below. And, 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 if if you make a purchase with Into the AM and you send me a little proof of purchase, you know what I'm going to do? I'll show you. Hang on, here we go. <laughs> I will draw you a picture as a thank you and I will post it off to you. So, so far I, uh, I, I haven't had too great a demand for my artistic skills, but that's okay. Cause um, can you even tell what it, at least you can tell roughly what it's based on. All right, I tried my best, okay? I'm a YouTuber, I'm not an artist. But yeah, if you buy anything from Into The AM as a thank you, just send me a message and I'll draw you a picture and post it off to you just as a thanks for helping out the channel. All right, that's got to be about a minute. Let's wrap this show up. And folks, that does it for good news for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for putting up with my utter lunacy this episode. I'm... <laughs> I've had too much sugar today. That's clearly what it is. But gang, what did you think about the items covered? Comment below, let me know. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, then you know what you got to do. You got to join the 6-1 Clicks by clicking the like, share, and subscribe buttons. And, and, and doing something new now, okay? So if you want to support the channel, this is a different thing now. They, did, they say that a man with two watches never knows what time it is. I don't understand that expression, but... On a completely unrelated note, I'm going to sort of drop what I'm doing with Patreon and move everything over to the YouTube channel members section. Patreon will still exist. It's still there, but I can't focus on two things at once. And the YouTube channel members seems to be just a much more prolific place for people to support the show. So if you want to you know, help out model behavior, then you can get a YouTube channel membership and the exclusive videos will be on there. And also that means that when I do the live streams, uh, you can comment in the live streams and the live streams are only up while I'm live streaming. And then they go into the members section. So you can watch the old live streams on there as well. I'm trying to think of more ways to give back to the people who help out the channel because oh my goodness, it's appreciated. <laughs> It really is, because I, I, don't, I don't know when this current gravy train is going to run dry. And when I get booted out of Japan, I'm going to look for another job. So if I can fall back on YouTube, whew, it's going to keep on manifesting it. <laughs> All right, gang. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the members section. And until next time, keep displaying moral behavior.
Big time 